Good morning, everybody. It's Dawn at Always in Stitches. It's August the 1st. It's a Monday, 2022, my goodness. And we've been doing the school girl sampler blocks uh, from this book. It's based on four and a half inch blocks. And last week we made a block that used half square triangles, one of each color. And when you make half square triangles the way that they have you make it in the book, you get two. So in, essentially we made two blocks. I mean, we cut out enough stuff to have two blocks. So I encouraged everybody to go ahead and sew up that second block, which was this, oh, let me just show it to you right here. It was this uh, flower basket block. So uh, I encouraged everybody to sew two. And I said we were gonna make uh, the second one into something either a mug rug or a pin cushion. And so here I am to show you those two things. Any four and a half inch block will do, okay? For this method, any four and a half inch block will do. Now I have several things going on here. This is a pin cushion. When I used to own a quilt shop and when I owned my quilt shop, I made these pin cushions to sell. So I have literally made hundreds, hundreds of these pin cushions. And uh, they're just real simple to do. And uh, they look, uh, you can use all different kinds of fabrics. I would just hoard fabrics that had to do with sewing stuff and make pin cushions out of sewing fabric. That was lots of fun. So this is what, uh, this is kind of a, um, Oh, I knew the name of this, but anyway, where it's dimensional, it's got a, it's got a body to it. This one is where just took a four and a half inch square and sewed it to a back and cinched it in the middle. And that makes for a fun pin cushion. And I applique a little thing. Well, actually my friend Tammy applique, and that's one of her antique buttons. And she put a little charm on it to give it some personality. I think that's really sweet. And then a mug mat is just flat, okay? I brought these so that you could see that there's no quilting on these at all. Now, if, and the reason I didn't quilt these is because I was selling them. So I didn't wanna add extra time and effort. And they look just fine unquilted. But I decided to quilt this little block because I thought it just lended itself to being quilted. And then somebody asked me, what are you gonna do with all your beginners and enders? Look, there's my, some of my beginners and enders right there. And I just turned them into little four patches and then I sewed four four patches together and I got a four and a half inch block. And I decided to uh, quilt it also. Now, when I quilt um, pin cushions, for my pin cushions, I like to use wool batting. This is dream wool batting. It is so nice. And the pins just glide in and out of it. It is so beautiful and so good because the wool has the lanolin in it. So this is what I use, dream wool batting. And I just get the craft size because you, know, you can get a lot of four and a half inch squares out of this big old uh, 46 by 36 piece of wool. Also, sometimes if I have a special quilt that I want wool batting in, and it's luxurious, I'll tell you when you quilt it up. You know, all the excess, I'll buy, I'll buy a batting that's even bigger than the, what I really need, and then I'll have all that extra all the way around to use in my pin cushions. So a little uh, strategy there. <laughs> now, for my mug mat, I'm going to use, these two products are the same product, essentially just two different companies, Soft and Stable or Bozel. Now, they both come in an iron-on or just a sew-in, and I just got the sew-in for this. You could use either or, um, but let me show you what it's like. It's a piece of foam, real thin foam that's encased by a webbing on each side. It's thin, very thin, very cushiony, but makes a nice stable uh, uh, mug mat. Something that's really stable, that's not just gonna be flimsy-whimsy. You know what I'm saying? So that's nice. 
Also for my mug mats, I have used uh, fleece. Fusible fleece. Now you've heard me talk about fusible fleece before if you've watched my channel. This is what I make my uh, display boards with, the fusible. And I just fuse it onto a piece of foam core and then just cut some binding and glue the binding on with my glue gun. So this is the product. And Peter's going to put all this information in the drop box. And if you punch or punch... Don't be punching your phone. If you tap on the link, it takes you right to the website and takes you right to that product so you can read all about it and find out all about it. So that's kind of convenient and that's nice. <clears throat> so uh, those are the kind of things I used when I was quilting. Some other things I wanna tell you about when I was quilting is I used my walking foot. Now, I don't know if your machine has it built in or if it's an extra accessory that you have to put on. Mine's an extra foot that I have to put on and it comes with this little uh, L-shaped gizmo. That's what I'm gonna call it, a little gizmo. And what you do is once you put that on your machine, there's a little snap. Now, some of them slide in and you have a little screw right here. You uh, make it go whichever width you want and then you screw it down. This just holds on uh, by force, okay? And what happens is, is that there's your needle. You know, your, your needle is, is right here and how whatever line you're gonna follow, you put your guide. Oh, well, that's what I'll call it. I'll call it a guide because I think that is what it's called. And you put your guide and that you can follow that guide along to make sure your lines are straight. Now, you don't have one of these gizmos. Let me show you a little trick. I learned this a long time ago. Let's say for instance, I wanna quilt to this and I wanna quilt it in grids. Take me some blue tape. I lay it on the edge, or maybe I want to do it on the diagonal. Maybe I want to do it on the diagonal. I lay the tape down on the diagonal. Now, if this is the width I want my quilting lines, hip, hip, hooray. If it's not, then I can just move the tape. But if it's the width, if it's the width, I would sew on one side, and then I would sew on the other side, but not into the tape, just using the tape as the guide. So I'd just be going, a -chuk -a -chuk -a -chuk. I love making that song. Sewing on one side of the line, then I take it out of the machine and sew on the other side of the line. And then I take the tape off and I'd move it over and I keep moving it over. And then I go to the other angle. And then all of a sudden I would have diagonal quilting. Can they see the quilting on that, Peter? Yep. The diagonal. So that's what I did here. I just took my piece of tape. I went from corner to corner. I laid it down. Now it wasn't the exact size cause I wanted it to actually go through the middle of my uh, squares. See that? So when I laid it down, I just made sure that it went through uh, the corners and I sewed a line and then I moved the tape and I moved it to these corners, laid it down, sewed the line. Picked it up, laid it down, sewed the line, sewed the line, and I just kept doing that, and then I turned it the other way and did that. That is a fun trick. I learned that a long time ago. I don't do a lot of quilting, but I can handle something this size. You know what I mean? If it was a quilt, a bed quilt, I, I wouldn't be able to do that, but this, this size I can handle. So I've kind of prepared my sandwich. Now, when you quilt, you have to have a sandwich. So when you use batting, you have to have a back because you don't want your uh, uh, feed dogs getting caught in the batting. So you have a back, you lay it wrong sides up, and then you take your batting, and it both pieces should be bigger than your actual little uh, thing that you're quilting. And then you lay that down, and then you would pin it, kind of pin it in place. And then... Now on this, all I'm gonna do is stitch in the ditch. Now what that means is the ditch is actually 
the seam line. So I'm just going to stitch right in the ditch. So I don't need any tape. I don't need any guide because the seam is my guide. Okay. So I'm just going to stitch in the ditch and I will just uh, straight line stitch that. See, even if I wanted to go on the diagonal, I could still, because these are all diagonal lines, but except for right there, look, I'd need my tape for doing it on the diagonal right there. So anyway, that's how you put your sandwich together. And then you would quilt that. And now when I'm doing it on the soft and stable or the bozal, you don't need a backing, okay? That mesh backing is good enough, okay? So now all I have to do is trim this. Trim it to four and a half. Now on this one, this one I'd have to be real careful when I trimmed it because I wouldn't want to lose my point there, my point. But on this one, it doesn't have a point, so it doesn't have to be so precise. When I quilted it, look, it got a little bit smaller. Can you see that? I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off. So now it's not going to be exactly four and a half. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to lay my back, my backing piece. I have to trim it to the size of the back, to the size of the front, I mean. Now my front and my back are the same size. Now I could put a fusible web on this if I wanted to. But if I'm just making a um, mug mat, I wouldn't worry about it. This is already stable enough. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my sew machine and with my backing fabric on top and my quilted fabric on the bottom, I'm sewing a quarter of an inch. Now I am going to sew about an inch in and stop lift up my needle and go a couple three inches and sew another inch in and i'm just sewing to the end and i'm not back stitching any i'm just bringing that around so essentially what i've done is I've left myself a little opening. When I skipped those, uh, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter top or bottom or what. This this uh, block doesn't have a top and a bottom, so it doesn't really matter. But I have a little opening. Otherwise, how would I turn it inside out, right? right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip my corner and I'm going to clip it almost to the thread but not to the thread I don't want to clip that thread because I don't want my corner coming open so I've clipped those corners off to make it turn a little bit easier and my points to come out a little bit easier now, if you wanted to, you could have backstitched here and here. All right, now I'm going to turn it. I'm going to grab in there. And I'm just going to... You know, if you have a point turner, which I do, and I love this point turner, I'm just going to take and I'm going to gently, gently make that point and take your time with it. And then I'm gonna roll it along that seam, really making that seam flatten out. I'll tug on a little bit and I'll roll it with my fingers. And I'll do that to each side. I'll be careful with that corner poker because it'll poke right through your fabric if you're oh, like that, if you're too aggressive. 
When you poke, you might want to poke on the quilted part instead of that back part. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to turn that under. If I wanted to make this into a pin cushion, I would fill it with the uh, filling, whatever you're going to use to fill it with. A lot of people like polyfill. Personally, I like crushed walnut shells. Some people use rice. Some people use um, sawdust. I've seen that done. Sawdust. Uh, personally, I like walnut shells. You can buy it at the pet store, but you have to buy like 25 pounds. And 25 pounds is a lot. So if you're just making one or two pin cushions, I would advise coming here to Always in Stitches. We have it in little packages. But I'm not going to have, um, this is not going to be a pin cushion. I'm going to show you a pin cushion. But you could definitely make this into a pin cushion. So if I wanted it to be a pin cushion, I would stop now and I would fill this full of whatever you want to fill it full of, okay? And then you would hand sew this together with a ladder stitch. And I call it the snake stitch because you start on one side and you go in and out, in and out, in and out with the thread. I'm gonna show you on a, another one over there. But if you're gonna keep it as a mug rug, what you're gonna do, is you're just gonna fold that under like that. And you're gonna, and get you a nice colored thread that you like. And I'm gonna top stitch this. I'm going to go ahead and top stitch it a quarter of an inch. Okay. I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut off my little excess thread there. Now, let me tell you, people, this would make a nice set of uh, stuff for Christmas. And look at that pretty mug rug. Isn't that, Is that pretty? For my desk? No, it's not for your desk. It's for my desk. Isn't that pretty? But you don't even drink coffee or tea. I know, but my, uh, I do drink tea. I think tea. that needs to live on my desk. You think it does? Yeah. But is And it's got some nice body to it. Feel the, feel it, Peter. It's got, Oh wow. you know, instead it's of that, just two it's pieces that, of fabric. It's that foam that you use. Yeah, and it's plus that now, or soft fuse. And when you say stable, I mean, when you set something on there, yeah. it's not going to like Slip away. rock because of a batting. Right, That's right. That's cool. Isn't that nice? So a little set of those tied with a ribbon for a coworker or your mailman or something, you know. Um, and if you don't want to get this fancy, just make a four patch. Just, you know, a regular four patch. So that was out of my leaders and enders, Peter. Fabric that probably would have been thrown away had I not stopped and cut yeah. one and a half Scraps. inch squares. Leftovers. Uh-huh and had those and now i've got a nice little project so let's go back over to the cutting table now on my basket of flowers i wanted it to be really special so i made a a nice cushiony one so it would be big like this you know i could turn i could have turned it into one like that and had i not made this into a mug rug that's what that would have been see i would have just had the back i would have put the stuffing in there and that would have been a pink pink cushion that looked the same as this the front and the back would have been together okay now if you want to make one that has dimension to it and has this little cushion i don't know what to call that but anyway you go to allpeoplequilt.com and peter's going to put a link in there okay and in the search engine, you have to put on pins and needles pin cushion, and it'll pop right up. Now, you have to kind of log in. You have to put in a password. I mean, you know how to do all that, where you have to join the thing. But if you've never been to allpeoplequilt.com, they've got a lot of information that's really good, and they get a lot of good free patterns and tutorials. And this is one of their tutorials. And this is the pattern for the backing and this little side dimensional piece. And then it shows you how to put it together. So you just follow these instructions. Use any four and a half inch block. That's what I'm going to do with this.
And after I get it all sewn together, I left an opening. I don't even know if you can find where I've stitched it back together. But anyway, I left an opening about that big so I could turn it inside out, okay? Now on this uh, middle piece here, I seamed it together. And after I sewed all this back together, I opened this up because I get a better shape when I fill it if I just have that little bitty opening there to put the walnut shells in. If I have an opening this big, I'm not gonna be able to get as many walnut shells in, okay? So these are my walnut shells. Uh, don't have your husband crush up walnut shells. These have been bleached. Uh, the bugs have been gotten out of them. Uh, the oil has, they have an oil. So these have been dried. These have been treated so that they don't, uh, have any goobers and gooky stuff in them, okay? So I get myself a funnel. And this is how I would have done this if it if I hadn't turned it into a mug rug. <clears throat> My vintage funnel still has a price tag on five dollars up the take. This is kind of messy, so I do it over a I just let that funnel down into the pin cushion. I'm gonna show you how to ladder stitch here in a few minutes. But the funnel, you just kind of have to wiggle it and you see all the stuff is going down into it. It probably is gonna take about two, two and a half cups to fill this pin cushion. Now, when I fill my pin cushions, I really like them filled. I don't want a wimpy pin cushion. So when it stops going down, I just kind of pack it in there and make it go in some more. And I'm just forcing it in there. I'm kind of pushing it in and pushing it in. Pushing it with my funnel. Making it go up the sides. When you think it's full, put another scoop in. And see what I mean by it being messy? And I'm going to push it up into those corners. And I'm telling you, if you think it's full, put another scoop or a half a scoop in there. Look, it's surely full by now, Dawn. Nope. I put some in, I push it down. Put some in, I push it down. Put some in, push it down. Put some in, push it down. Okay. That is really packed full, okay? I want to make sure my corners are coming out. Make sure my corners are getting filled. I'm just going to dust off that top. See what I'm doing? I'm pushing all that back in and I'm getting my fabric. Now, can you see that there's my fabrics peeking out? Got me a needle. Matching thread. Gonna knot the end. This is a quilter's knot. I'm 
gonna hide my knot down on the inside of my seam. And then I'm gonna bring that up, pinch that together. And I'm gonna go from one side And there's a fold right there. See that? See how I've just slipped through the fold? And then I so I took a bite out of one side. Now I'm going to take a bite out of the other side. See why I call it the snake stitch? It's really called the ladder stitch. You go from one side and you slide in between that fold. And you can do it one side at a time if you want. And I am just sliding between the folds. And I'm re-sewing that other forwards and backwards so that I've kind of secured my stitch. And then I'm just going to um, take a little bite out of the fabric. Kind of a tiny little bite. Because my thread's the same color, I don't really have to, you know, hide it. And what I'm, I've got a loop here, and I'm going to go through that. Oh, shoot. Okay, I've got a loop here. I'm going to go through that loop twice. And I'm going to pull that right down in to that fabric. And then I'm going to hide that in the pin cushion leave a little tail in the pin cushion. Let me get my scissors. Because I've overstuffed it, see? Now it fills in my corners. If you wanted to cinch that with a button, you could, but this one doesn't need cinch because the whole pattern see is I want the whole pattern to be visible. I don't want it to be cinched in the middle. If you cinch them in the middle, sometimes it's nice to have a ribbon. These, This is a four patch, okay? No, it isn't. This is just a solid piece of fabric. This is just two, four um, and a half inch squares and the center. And then this is a four and a half inch, two squares with an applique. And then this is a four and a half inch square, really, really pieced. And then this is my basket. Isn't that pretty? Do you love that, Peter? I love it. I think it's just, desk. and look, look, it's a real pin cushion. And that wool on the top there, that just makes it so nice. Makes that lanolin just really conditions your pins and it makes it so nice. And I just love the way they turn out. They've got a good weight to them. It doesn't take hardly any time at all. I mean, this block probably took me maybe, because I already had it cut out from the last block I did, it probably only took me 15 minutes to sew that together. So this whole project might have taken me a half an hour to do. Wow. So this would make great gifts That's for fast. your sewing friends. That's fast. Yeah, I used to sell these for $10. Dang. Because you know, I could whip them up so you fast. You know, in this economy, you can sell them for like 25. 35. Yeah. That's an antique, beautiful antique button on there. Tammy gave me an antique button. When you cinch one, you have to Thanks, use Tammy. two buttons. Thanks, Tammy. Yeah, Tammy's my friend. I love the little add-ons, the little charms and things you can add on to them. You know, make your things special. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you make pin cushions, and I hope you post them on the Insiders group, in, on the Always in Stitches Insiders group on Facebook. I can't wait to see them all, okay? And maybe we'll come up with some other fun things to do with our four and a half inch blocks. Thanks. Bye.